Welcome to the third video of the channel, where we will be exploring early specialisation and its impact on sport. It's considered widely through coaches, parents and any social impact on the individual that are placed. Early specialisation is where we try and spot and develop the talent early as possible in order to save time when they are older. By doing so, we can, we can introduce advanced tactics and techniques much early on to grant them the success that early specialisation can offer for the athletes. When I say it's been considered, I do mean it when it was introduced back between the 1950s and 1980s, primarily by Eastern Europe. Heightened by the success from gymnastics, which is understandable as it is suggested that gymnastics are tend to be born with flexibility that a gymnast would need, with flexibility being very hard to train. Development is key and the pace of it is vital, which is why this theory has seen kids as young as 8 training up to 9 hours a week. This may be promoted by the push of their parents as kids won't really understand the great deal of effort that needs to be done. But with countries allowing competition for 3 years to take part in, should we start to question that we are developing too young and taking their childhood away? Leave your comments in the comment box and see whether people agree or disagree with you. Taking away some negativity from this video, the theory does offer positives all around. For example, with us starting so young, we are developing a foundation to spot talent early on and not waste time in scouting and developing talent that can't be progressed. By spotting the talent benefits the individual by adapting them into the sport and that sport only so they can focus developing primarily on that sport and not multiple sports. Spotting the talent means we can, without hesitation, give them the advanced coaching they deserve to become better. However, is this showing a lack of equality to athletes? Should we train everyone equally? You know what to do. Leave your comments again in the comment box and have a talk with each other. We must go back to some negativity as with every theory brings negatives to consider. Stress levels may increase due to the broad range of skills being underpinned at one time. This can cause a rise in dropout rates due to a lack of enjoyment. Limited opportunities are brought on with specific skills needing to be learnt, which means they aren't exploring what's out there, but this is what needs to be done if wanting to progress further. Tiger Woods is someone who started the sport very early. After making an appearance on the talk show, it was clear to viewers and the audience that he would make it big with him hitting golf balls for fun at the age of just two. This can be pictured on the top picture on this slide. However, it is also obvious it wasn't his personal choice with his dad being alongside him on the show. Social factors play a big part with parents being pushing in education, forcing you to participate. But where is the individual's choice when it comes to sport? But then again, I'm sure Tiger Woods isn't complaining when he's looking at his bank balance. The 10,000 hour rule is highlighted by Ericsson that deliberate practice on the skill for that long will heighten the chances of individuals progressing and becoming masters at the skill. Evidence that this works was published in 1990 by Christina, where defending in football and the tackle rates improved from 25% to a massive 90. Positives and negatives come attached with this as expected, and instead of me talking, I'll give you a break from my voice and let you read the for and against published by Bradley in 2012. Please press pause to do so. The effect of learning one skill is evidence in the picture on your screen. The example is learning to catch. By learning this shows how many sports you can play if mastered. The ones highlighted in red show the amount that the athlete is unable to play. However, it's not because they can't play, it's because they won't, as they feel as though because they don't know one thing, they therefore can't perform. This is a bad way to think as it's a lack of motivation and not widening your skills and experiences to help create backup plans in case of change of mind. To conclude, I will provide some figures. Positive figures include a stress decrease, but through research there are more negatives with there being a decrease in motivation and enjoyment and an increase in knee pain disorders and ACL injuries. Children's, children exposed to single sports contribute to 50% of the overuse injury numbers, therefore creating between a 70 and 93% chance of them becoming injured through overperforming in that single sport. Thanks for making it through the video. Please come back next time to explore how social factors play a part in the talent pathway in sport. See you then.